What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, Johnny Garrett. Today, I want to talk about leaders. It's specifically, I want to talk about bad leaders, and I want to talk about three sides that you're a bad leader. Uh, whether you are a leader or you need to have the words to say to your boss why they're a bad leader, I just want to equip you with that knowledge real quick. So that is what I'm here to do because I have worked with a lot of bad companies and uh, had a lot of bad leaders. And it's nothing personal. Don't really want to talk shit. Um just to talk for the sake of talking shit, but I'm here to just talk about the things that make you a bad leader. And I hope that you either point these out in the leadership or go find another job or, you know, go change, change yourself if you're our leader watching this. So yeah, uh, let's just jump right into it. Let me shrink myself. It's normal what we do here anyway. So we have three sides of your bad leader. And the number one is failing to recognize people's work. I put this first because this kind of hits home for me. I uh, tried really, really, really hard just to um, have to beg for praise, beg for praise for my leadership, not necessarily beg for praise, but it feels like when you talk to them, like, hey, do you think I'm doing a good job? Because you go a whole year, maybe a year and a half without hearing good job from a single one of your management team. Uh, while everybody else is just talking crap about you, it makes you... You know, you listen to the voices that the ones that the ones are telling you uh, the most. It's usually when people are talking crap and there's no management like to push back against that. Um, that's very painful. Anyway, so failing to recognize people's work is number one personal story. I tried really hard. Never hear anything from pretty much any leader ever. No leader in any like uh, factory setting, no middle level manager or anything like that. Nobody would ever tell me anything. So. Impact on your team. Not recognizing high performers can demotivate employees and reduce their productivity, engagement, loyalty, and job satisfaction. And just anybody, not even just the high performers, just anybody, man. If you don't hear a good job, how, you're going to think you're doing a bad job. That's just, this is point, you know, everybody needs feedback. Good feedback and bad feedback. But management teams seem to only think that bad feedback is the only thing that exists. Look, you didn't punch in at the right, you didn't punch in at time, bro. You left your, you left your machine too early, bro. I don't know. Like, there's a, there's a myriad of examples. You guys, if I say that, you probably had a manager who was rowdy about something that actually had nothing to do with productivity. Um, it's just what they do. It's just a bad. It's what bad leaders do. Anyway, so statistics to back this up is that Gallup found that regular recognition boosts productivity, engagement, retention, customer satisfaction, and safety. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. This one should be a no brainer. But, you know, got to have statistics to back it up or else you'll hear that person down in the comments saying, source, bro, source, bro, source. So the solution is very simple. Regularly recognize and praise employees for their good work, both publicly and privately. Create a culture of catching people doing something right and rewarding them. Crazy concept. Simple, but crazy. It's insane concept. This would require more work from a management team. Sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm still a little bit salty about uh, managers in general. So this is, this is, uh, I'm going to try my best to try to be a little bit more uh, professional here. So the number two side that you're a uh, bad leader is being a control freak. Impact on the team. Micromanaging. Okay, so I want to put a star here. Micromanaging is a very arbitrary term. It means a lot of different things. When somebody's just pr uh, providing you feedback, you can just shoot back if you're uh, defensive or super butt hurt. And you can just go, you're micromanaging me. You know what I mean? It's not micromanaging. It's a, it's a large gray area. So just take this with a grain of salt. But micromanaging does exist. Is just we're not quite clear, clear on where like some managers have the authority to step in or where you know autonomy is uh, necessary. But it does exist and it does create a suffocating environment, leading to frustration, lack of teamwork, and stifled innovation. Employees feel undervalued and may lead for competitors. Statistics. I feel like it stands on its own. I feel like it's pretty. Uh, I feel like that's another thing that, like, you know, if you're a micromanaging boss, I, I really don't need to back this up with statistics, but I just have them just in case. According to a study by Trinity Solutions and published in the book, My Way of the Highway by Harry Chambers, 79% of respondents had experienced micromanagement and 69% considered changing jobs because of it. A survey, a survey by Comparably found that 42% of employees have left a job because of a bad boss with micromanagement being the, one of the top reasons. So subjectively, these employees are leading these two studies, I guess. Uh, I read them, I briefly read them, but I'm not really, I did go straight into the study, the nitty gritty, but I don't know. My own personal experience, plus this experience, uh, there's there's a myriad of other reasons. Again, I don't want to like get too caught up in the weeds. I'm just making my argument, making my case. So the solution is to trust your team to perform the tasks they were hired for. 
Shift from task management to results-driven leadership. Trade a mentor to employees, but give them autonomy once they demonstrate competence. Right. So I was going to jump in before I finish that, uh, but it pretty much covers it. So essentially, you if an employee knows what they're doing, leave them alone. And the only time you want to go talk to them is if you need to address something that is like a dire situation or go talk to them, have positive interactions. One of the main, uh, one of my main gripes with uh, nine to fives is that when I go to my job, every time I saw a yellow hat, every time I saw a manager, it was bad news. It was never good news. So then every time you saw them, and like I'd hear some managers talk about how like they don't like the employees and the employees treat them unfairly and stuff like that. It's like, well, bro, when you only come around to talk crap or to like come down at someone and never say good job to anybody or never have positive affirmations to anybody, what do you expect, man? You know what I mean? Like if the cops show up at my house, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be scared I'm going to jail. You know what I mean? They're not here to save me. You know what I mean? Because I don't, you know, I never see them unless something bad's happening. So like don't expect any different treatment if you're never going to freaking, I don't know. A lot of pent up feelings there too, but anyway. Let's just try to move on. All right. If you feel the need to micromanage somebody, it kind of says that you need to train them. You need to get them trained up. But once they demonstrate the competence, leave them the fuck alone unless you want to, like, boost them up. You know, if you if you need to have a feedback review with them or if you need to, like, praise them, you need, you need to just leave people alone and let them do their jobs because most people that do their jobs more than a manager know their jobs better than a manager because they're doing the, doing the job. I'm not going to tell a manager how to manage while I'm kind of here, but I'm backing it up a little bit with like my own personal experience and stuff like that and like studies to back it up. And I feel like I could be a better manager than most managers because I was a manager. Whatever, 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 whatever. But like I said, most people who do their jobs don't try to tell the managers how to do their jobs. And if they do, then yeah, you can have that conversation, but still. You can't do their jobs as good as they can do their jobs. That's why they do their jobs. You don't do their jobs. Anyway, moving on. Now, the number three reason is uh, something I have a problem with myself. So this is what I try to work on personally is having the last word. Leaders who insist on having the last word demonstrate low emotional intelligence and erode trust and morale. Employees feel their opinions are not valued, leading to just engagement in my last company I worked for this was a major problem you'd say something and then they'd have to retort they'd have to rebuttal they'd have to shut you down they'd have to put their foot down on whatever you're saying they'd have to have the last word this was very annoying you can't just say okay I understand and I'm sorry none of that no okay I understand you know that's a that's a unique perspective there's nothing like that they had to just like fire back and then like stifle any outer opinions and what to be honest it wasn't just the management team it was anybody in general there's a lot of people there who always just had to have the last word on everything and you caught me in a lot of arguments because most of the time when I'm arguing, it's because I feel like I'm right. It's not. And I'm willing to hear whatever. I don't know. I, I, I've been to the debating as a hobby. Anyway. Statistics. A study published in the Harvard Business Review found that leaders with high emotional intelligence create climates, which information sharing, trust, health, Healthy risk taking and learning flourish. Conversely, leaders that have low emotional intelligence create a negative environment that stifles these factors. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the actual review, but I'm sure if you look up these keywords, it'll pop up. Uh, research from the Gallup organization shows that managers account for at least 70% of the variance in employee engagement scores, indicating that a manager's emotional intelligence and leadership style significantly impact employee morale and productivity. So, what I'd like to comment on, comment on here, again, sorry, I forgot to put, post the uh, links there. I could probably polish this up and reshoot, but I'm not going to do that because I don't care. But anyway, we'll look up the keywords. What I'm saying is, what I'm going to say is, is all a business is, is a an expanded family, okay? So, like, your leaders are just the parents of a bunch of kids. The kids are the ones doing the jobs or whatever. Or at least that's the roles we take because that's how, you know, whatever. Um, that's just the way that humans seem to organize themselves. And the kids are going to do what the parents teach them. So if the parents don't teach their like kids or don't lead them efficiently, then how do you expect the kids to even like grow up to have the chance? You know what I mean? Like they're going to have to figure it out on their own. But at a company, if you step out, if you step out of a uh, line, it's not society where you make mistakes and then you're allowed to like recover from them and not be killed for them. At a company, if you step out of line and make mistakes, you are killed by the company. You are no longer allowed to work there and then you have to go start over somewhere else. So I'd be like, it's a lot more at stake at a company, uh, figuratively, you could say. Um, but yeah, uh, you have a shitty leader, you're going to have a shitty staff. 
I mean, it starts from the top down always. It always trickles down. You're, you you can only be as good as the environment you're allowed to grow in. And if you're, the environment is controlled by the leaders, then you cannot grow in that environment. So if you have crappy leaders, you're going to have a crappy job. You're going to have crappy productivity and stuff like that. It always is going to fall back to the leaders. This is, I don't know what's driving this video. This is kind of like a little passion video, as you can tell. But anyway. Ah, solution. Listen to your feedback from your team and leverage their insights. Create an ecosystem where everybody's voice is heard and considered. Explain decisions, transparency, to build trust and alignment. Yeah, you can tell me to go fuck myself if you explain why. You know what I mean? I'm going to do this ultimately because this is what I feel is the best because blah, 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 blah. Not just, yeah, that's a good idea, but we're not going to do that. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the, uh, a lot of companies I've worked for, almost every single one, uh, the leadership, everything was so hush hush. They felt like they, everything needed to be behind closed doors. Created a lot of divisiveness, a lot of uh, us and them, a lot of. Um, I wrote, there's no trust. There's no camaraderie. All of the back paddings I got was when I was a good boy, a good little boy in the honeymoon phase. But then, you know, that, that went away because they spent time with each other, giving each other high fives and pats on the back of their little their little club and the management team in the office or whatever. But they forget that, like, the factory floor workers are also part of the team and there was no, there's nothing to bridge, nothing to bring anybody together. Um, and it led to these top, I think, like, Ultimately, all of that, all of this happens because of that divide. But yeah, Sub uh, blah, blah, blah. summary of the solutions for the effective leadership: recognition, regularly acknowledge and reward employees' contributions, trust and honor, empower employees by trusting them to handle their responsibilities independently. Actively listen to your team's feedback, incorporate their insights and decision making. You know, there's a I say myriad a lot. I've said it three times, I think now, but like there's more and more and more solutions to these problems and stuff like that that I can go out in the video. But I'm trying to I'm trying to condense these into bite-sized episodes that like you want to click on and listen to and stuff like that. But there's there's so many different things I could say about how to improve your business. That makes me want to uh, cry a little bit. Um, I don't know. Some of, some of this stuff is so painstakingly, it's so painful to watch uh, other people make these mistakes over and over again and how people can't seem to realize the um the difference all a business is is a scaled up version of a transaction between two friends that's what it's supposed to be or a family member okay so like on a country scale how do you organize like imagine the country was one big family which we are we're supposed to be you know we're all humans so we're all technically a family if we like you know what i mean like a country is just a giant family, and if that family treats each other like shit, that country's gonna act like it's gonna be. I don't know. Like that's how a company's supposed to be. It's supposed to act like a big giant family because we're all supposed. To be. It's 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 families organizing themselves to deliver goods and services to a bunch of different people in the most effective ways possible. But like we get lost up, we get caught up in all these little like uh, disputes, these little disputes that never get resolved because like people seem to forget that like. The core of this is family values. The core of this is morality. The core of this is like, if you treat your employees right, they'll treat you right. And the ones that don't treat you right, get rid of them, whatever. But like, it's supposed to be like a positive feedback loop where like, yeah, you know, I help you, you help me. And then we provide a good and a service for our customers. And then those customers then provide a good and a services. You know, it's supposed to be like a collaborative effort for us to essentially uh, distribute goods and resources to as many people as possible as cheaply and efficiently as possible and the more efficiently and cheaply you do things the more you're rewarded because how, that's what money is more reward equals responsibility that's what money is is work and responsibility so that if you have more money that means you have more responsibility to more people it's not just like this money grab for like oh i got all the money now i get to do whatever i want but that's how uh the country in corporate america is treating everything and i'm going off on a random tangent and this is crazy but i'm just gonna finish it i guess but well, everybody wants to hoard all the money to themselves because they want to be selfish and stuff like that. It creates all these breaks and these chains and stuff like that, and the system can't work because we all need to whatever. But I mean, like, it starts it starts with you, it starts in your house. But once you figure your house out, then you have to start working on your company. So I, I guess I implore you to please start start hammering your company, which is tough to say to people because if you make too many waves or whatever, then the corporate teams are going to come for you and cut you out. But I mean, like, fuck them. I guess I don't know. I uh, that being said, I guess it's a very apocalyptic. We're, we're living in actually a very apocalyptic uh, world where like nothing will ever change unless the corporate teams decide to. And I guess I guess the only way to actually stop them is to outcompete them because like there's plenty of examples out there of people who prove the corporate model wrong. Like my favorite example is Mr. Beast. He is the most um, he is the biggest YouTuber on YouTube and essentially his entire business model has been giving money away. Not 
going tit for tat with your labor force or anything like that. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, his entire, like, he is the, he spits in the face of the entire capitalist model, I guess. Like, capitalism is supposed to be, oh, whatever. I don't know. Now let's cut this off at the end. Thanks for watching. Those are my top three uh, indicators that you're a bad leader. And if you're a bad leader, fix yourself. Um, everybody is on some level. All three of these things. I'm not going to say I'm, I, I'm probably guilty of all three of these things on some level. So I'm going to pause and reflect on myself to work out all these things through too. But more people need to recognize this in themselves. And that's why I'm making this video. Thanks for watching. See you later.